and welcome to this tutorial on creating reflections. Although there are many uses for reflections, I find that using a reflection can add intrigue to images that people are otherwise used to seeing straight or normal, like the image on the screen. There are thousands of shots of the Lincoln Memorial from various angles and distances under different types of lighting from dawn to dusk to night. I have hundreds of my own images, but I have never before seen Lincoln reflected as if sitting on the edge of the reflection, reflecting pool, which actually sits a few hundred yards away. So I decided to try it out and see how I like it. So let's begin. This can be done on any image. So in this case, I've taken my image of Lincoln and I've already processed it and I have it looking the way I want it for now. Um, and all I'm doing with uh, this tutorial is not showing you the processing of the Lincoln, but really just showing you how to add reflections to any of your images. So the first step that we're going to do is to um, actually make our layer editable. So right now you can see that it says background. A simple way to uh, change this is just to double click on it. You'll get this dialog box. Layer zero is fine for a name, and if you hit OK, you'll see that it's converted to layer zero. This just allows us to be able to make changes to that layer. Now, there's a couple ways to do this next step. We're going to actually duplicate the layer. You can either duplicate the layer by going under your layer menu up here on the um, upper left hand side of the screen and just choosing du duplicate layer. You can actually use the keystroke for duplicate layer, which is the command um, uh, J feature or we're going to do a trick which we are going to duplicate the layer and flip the layer at the exact same time. So what we're going to do is while holding down the Alt or Option key with our layer selected as it is, hold down the Alt Option key, and then we're going to go to the top left uh, corner of the screen and choose Edit, Transform, and Flip Vertical. So when you do that, you'll see that we've flipped the vertical, flipped our image upside down, but if you go back to the far right side, you'll see that there's a layer zero copy. So if you wanna change the name, all you need to do is double click on the layer zero copy, and we're gonna go ahead and type reflection, and go ahead and hit enter. So the next step in the process is to increase the canvas size of our image. So not increasing the image size per se, but increasing the background on which this image sits so that we can then move our reflection into place. So to do this, you want to grab the crop tool. You can either go to the toolbar, uh, depending on where you have it, mine's on the far left over here, and choose the crop tool. Or you can hit the C key, which will also give you the crop tool. Um, so what we want to do is just come down to the bottom of the image. As you can see, I'm down here at the very bottom below Lincoln's head and you're going to left click and drag so that the bounding box, the bounding area, grows. And I say a couple inches, <coughs> so you end up with this transparent area here. After we've moved this, we go ahead and hit enter to save the um, new crop size, the new uh, image, uh, excuse me, canvas size. And then we're going to move our reflection into place. So to do that, we want to grab the move tool. The move tool can be accessed by either hitting the V key on your keyboard or coming again over to the left and grabbing the arrow, uh, the arrow up at the top. So either one of those will get you your move tool. Once you um, have made that selection, so you have the right tool, you want to go ahead and left click on your reflection image. Make sure that you're on your reflection layer. So you want to grab that uh, reflection and just pull it down. And basically you want to line this up so that the bottom edges meet, there should be no space, and then just unclick and it'll line up um, and set itself into place perfectly. Now that our reflection has uh, been moved into position, we want to create an, um, a layer mask because we're now going to sort of modify this reflection so it seems more realistic than just a complete complete reversal of the image. So to do that, we first want to add a layer mask. So bottom right hand corner below um, your layers area, you'll see the layer mask. If you go ahead and bring that up, you'll see that it brings up a white layer. Um, the next step is to actually grab the gradient tool. And most people tend um, to have the bucket, the paint bucket in their toolbar, it's probably the most commonly used tool. But if you go ahead and right click on the bucket, you'll see that there is a gradient tool in there. So if we're gonna go ahead and grab the gradient tool, and again, if you notice here, it says there's a G over on the right hand side, that's because if you hit the G key over and over again, you'll scroll through all the options for G and one of those will come up as the gradient tool. So once we've selected that, we do need to set a couple of items um, within the type of tool we wanna use. 
So to start off with, you want to select to black, <coughs> black to white. So if you go ahead and hover, um, click on the down arrow to get the options. And if you just hover over each one, it'll come up and tell you what this is. So this is a foreground to background. This is foreground to transparency. The next one is your black to white. So we want to go ahead and select that. We also want to grab the linear tool. So what you'll see here is that I currently have the radiant, uh, radial, excuse me, gradient selected. We want to select the one right next to it, which is the first one in the list, and it is the linear gradient. So go ahead and select that. Now, this is about personal preference, but you basically um, want to create, have the reflection drop off. So what I like to do is grab from the bottom up, and you just kind of might have to experiment a couple of times to see if you get what you want. But if you go ahead and um, holding the shift key, down and left click with the gradient tool and just drag a line into your image and see what you end up. Now see, I think that that's probably a little bit too faded. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna hit uh, step back, which you can either do from um, the edit tool right here, which is step back, or you can hit control Z to reverse one step. So I'm gonna try it again and see what we get. That's probably a little bit better. Now what you can see is that we've taken our reflection um, layer and we've basically had it kind of blend itself easily into a transparency. So right now we're not quite finished, although we are very close. The next step would be to add um, a layer, a solid color layer such as black to give this more of a reflecting, reflecting feel. So to do that, go ahead and move back over to the adjustment layers and pick a solid color. And right now it's coming up from a color that I had selected in a in a different for a different image. But I'm in this case I want to go towards black. So I'm going to go ahead and select black. So you can either do that by uh, putting zeros in the RGB boxes, or you can put 100% in each of the CMYK boxes, or you can drag to the bottom corner. Um, many ways to get there. So go ahead and hit OK. Now, as you can see, um, <coughs> we've kind of blacked out our entire image. So the final step of this process is to go ahead and drag the color fill, your color layer that you just created, all the way to the bottom so it sits behind. And now, as you can see, where the transparency existed um, from our gradient tool now kind of fills in with black and gives you the feel of this reflection fading away. Now the um, one thing you can do at this point is if you, if you feel like this is still just too much, you can uh, go ahead and change the opacity of your reflecting layer. And that way it just mellows out a little bit and starts to feel more like water. So that's really the extent of um, creating a reflection on an image. I've chosen to use an image that, that might not seem to call out for reflection, but I think the point is, is this can be done for anything. You can use this to reflect trees and water, create water that might not have been there um, with fall trees. But I think the most common use of this exact same technique is uh, city images on water. So here's an image that I did a while back. It's an image of Seattle, the skyline of Seattle, reflected in the bay. In the bay. And basically, the exact same technique is applied here. So although this is a much more complicated image, there was a lot more that I had to do to the city. I added the fireworks. Um, when it was all said and done, the very last step was to create the reflection. And then also in this reflection, because this is moving water, um, by definition, it's an active bay. I also put um, some surface blur into it. You can do this or you don't have to do it. It's really a personal preference. But there's lots of uses for this reflecting technique and so I hope you enjoy it and I look forward to seeing it in your images. Take care and thanks again. If you would like to see this video on paper, follow this link.